I had been in New York, and I had been doing little things here and there and sh uh, some showcases. And uh, I recall that I was hired by a guy who was doing a short film on violence, <clears throat> and he hired me and another actor, myself and another actor, to have a fist fight in a field. And he wanted to see how we handled that and would we do it, and he was going to pay us $30 a piece. Looking back on that, I think I said, 30 bucks, you bet. Uh, and so this guy and I met, and we secretly went off to Central Park and rehearsed the entire fight scene. <laughs> and then we were off in uh, we were off in Jersey somewhere in some forest, having a fist fight that wasn't real. Probably looked very bad, and neither one of us got hurt. And we apologized to the fellow, and he says, that's okay, that's how you guys handle it. I, I re recall that incident. Those kinds of things happening. I was working as a, a waiter at Dan Daly's, Daly's Dandelion, which was Skitch Henderson's restaurant. <clears throat> Skitch Henderson was the music director for uh, Johnny Carson. And New York was all very, 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 very new to me, very exciting. I was working at a place called the American Place Theater. I. Dan Adea was a buddy of mine. We were working together in that thing. We were um, taking acting classes. Uh, at that time, I had an agent, and uh, Michael Hartig, I think was his name. And I believe Michael set up the audition. And the audition, I walked in. Uh, I recall being relatively nervous with a whole bunch of people. And I remember it went rather well. I think Dan right there said, yeah, yeah. And I went, wow, great. Terror was what I, was my experience. <clears throat> I'd never done a soap opera. I had done uh, episodic television uh, under contract at Universal. I was relatively stiff. <clears throat> and um, I, I, um, I, was, I was always concerned about forgetting lines. It's taken me probably like Paul Newman, maybe 30 years to understand how to answer a telephone, somewhat believably. <clears throat> so I got the job and I got the script, and I didn't know the format where you would go in the night, you know, you'd do the show, you'd, the next day you'd, you'd rehearse that night, you, you'd, you'd walk through it, uh, you'd come in, uh, you'd have some stuff go on in the morning, and then you were going to shoot this thing. And so I got a tape recorder, and I would tape both sides of the con I'd tape the, um, not my conversation, but I would take the dialogue from the, my responsive dialogue and my cues, and I would tape it, and I would, so that I could, because I didn't really have anybody to work with particularly. <clears throat> and I'd sit in my little apartment over on the east side, and I would play the, <laughs> I would play the, play the, uh, the, the the, the microphone, I mean, the, the tape out is to, all right, you get in there, there's some leviathons. And then I would say, oh, there are leviathons? Uh, well, they can't touch me because I'm Skylar Robson or whatever. And I would do my dialogue, and I would do this with myself, which never worked. When I got there, I was convinced. Uh, my biggest fear was that I would forget my lines, and this was live. The one time that I did that and I was doing a play here, uh, I was in, uh, here comes Mr. Jordan. And we call it, we were in the Off-Broadway Theater in Long Beach. I left that on my resume, it's just Off-Broadway. Um, I forgot my lines in the middle of that, and everybody's eyeballs perked up, and I started just swearing. I started four-letter epithets, and this guy looked at me, and he sort of filled in for me. That was one of my first sort of experiences in theater. And I never got over it. To this day, I, I'm, I'm much better at it uh, now. I can get 20 pages down and spit it out, but I just spit it out, I understand, a little bit better. So I had a difficult time relaxing on, this, on the set. That was my, my uh, main memory. And by the time they finished putting the pancake makeup on me to the degree that I looked like a mummy um, and, and started washing, walking through the process, it was, uh, it was a real eye-opener, you know. I enjoyed watching Selby and Laura. They were very good at what they did. And I've forgotten the name of the gal that 
Mm. But uh, there were some very, very, very fluid people in there. Yeah, Grayson was just, just, well, she was wonderful. She was just <clears throat> sort of Mother Earth and just body and direct and very comfortable. And I felt pretty relaxed around her and I enjoyed, enjoyed working with her. But I never really hit my stride there. They got me out of there before my stride <laughs> hit it. But I had some fun times. I remember uh, Laura, we were doing a play off Broadway, way off Broadway at the Sheridan Square Theater, um, rehearsing with her. I remember, um, I, I've been, my career, I've been bitten, turned into a leviathan. I've had my heart replaced on General Hospital, put into Mrs. Quartermain's body, which I refused to attend. <clears throat> and they weren't real pleased with me, but I said, just, uh, it's not going to happen unless you pay, pay me. I'm, my contract is over. They got very furious with me, but I wouldn't do it. It cost me a fair amount of money, but I just didn't want to be around that particular production. and. So they hired a guy that was a foot shorter than me, and they took his heart out and put it in Mrs. Quartermain's. Well, we just plowed on. We, we could occasionally stop. We didn't reshoot that, I recall. Uh, I, I, very frankly now, I'm going to be blunt. My wife will kill me. But uh, basically, I, I thought my whole charade was one big blooper. For me, it was a constant struggle <clears throat> and uh, um, to sort of... Uh, to, to hit a stride, and uh, I looked at some of the old stuff. It was okay. It was all right. But uh, I was so dedicated to getting those lines memorized and not forgetting them that all else went out the window. All intent, <laughs> thought, emotional life, to, you know, it was getting the word said. <clears throat> This may not be the audition, uh, the audition tape that you're interested in, but that's what transpired. As to uh, uh, some of the people, I, uh, it, was a, it was a very interesting experience, and I was uh, <laughs> saddened that uh, Skyler's character <clears throat> didn't continue on, but it was a good learning experience.